Hello and welcome to the DSO Imager channel. My name is James and tonight I'm going to show you how I processed uh, M74 which is a pretty cool galaxy. Now I captured data for this target. Uh, it, it spanned months. Uh, being a broadband target of course I uh, only took data when there was no moon out and of course a clear sky. So to have those two variables line up as uh, most of you know is is not always a common thing and uh, because of that uh, I ran into some challenges uh, specifically uh, issues where flats weren't working correctly uh, due to new dust motes forming and I ran into some other issues so you're gonna see in this video how I address some of that stuff in the processing and um, it should be interesting now I have a total of 20 hours of exposure on, on this target. Here's the breakdown. So out of that 20 hours, you know, 13 and a half is all luminance. Uh, and um, to be honest, uh, a lot of this data was uh, gathered during um, marginal seeing conditions too. So this turned out to be a bit softer than, um, than I would have preferred. Uh, but I decided I want to move on with this target instead of keep collecting data on it and so this is what I got. So as far as equipment goes this is a Celestron Edge uh, 8 inch edge uh, with the Celestron 0.7 reducer so I'm at a 14 22 millimeter focal length. Uh, the camera being used is the ZWO ASI 294, 294 mono uh, and I'm using it in the um, bin 2 or 11 megapixel mode. Alright, so let's first look at the raw subs here. So here's the luminance. And yeah, I mean you can see problems, right? I got dust over here and dust over here, the flat's incorrect. I got some kind of weird artifact. I'm not sure what's causing this. It might be a light coming from a nearby source or something. I'm not sure. Here's the HA, and again, I have something going on with the flats up here, uh, but I mean, all I'm wanting from the HA is, is this. Now, this looks terrible, by the way. Uh, the seeing was really bad when I was uh, capturing this data, and I considered just tossing it and going straight RGB on this one, but... Um, I mean, we're not we're not counting on this for a whole lot of detail, and so I decided to use it anyway. And you know, we'll see how that turns out. And then here's uh, our red and our green. Oops. Here we go. And our blue. And so yeah, we got some problems over here. Uh, there is a, a light gradient, so um, south uh, east is my main pollution source. So I'm in a Bortle 5. It's almost a Bortle 4. Actually, it's pretty dark west, north and west. Uh, but east, and specifically southeast, uh, is right over town, and you, you can see it. You can see the gradient. Alright, so first things first, uh, I went ahead and cropped and then ran dynamic uh, background extraction on each channel. So we can take a look at these. Uh, so there's our luminance and the HA. It's red. So I mean, dynamic background extraction totally took care of the light pollution gradient. Now, I did run deconvolution on luminance, and I think actually uh, this is it, yeah. So here, this is without deconvolution. Kind of hard to see. Uh, if I zoom in, though, you'll see it on these stars, and then that's with deconvolution. So actually... If I go ahead and adjust 
this to uh, what, what you're seeing down here on the screen transfer function in case anyone didn't know you could do this uh, you hovered a mouse pointer into the field what I want to do is is pull this back just to darken this auto stretch so we can see the detail better here so just hover your mouse pointer in the K column in this case since it's a, a, a mono image and then scroll down on your mouse wheel you see how it's moving that it basically what you're doing is zooming in on the scale so now you can grab this and just pull it back a little bit and now when I flip back and forth it, it should be more obvious see that so no deconvolution with deconvolution so I mean I think it's still soft but it makes a difference it, it helped it okay and then next uh, I need to combine the RGB channels into a color image and that's what we have right here and uh, this is yeah this is not stretched uh, then I, for color calibration I used photometric color calibration and that's the result that I got so uh, just real quick color calibration I mean you can either do the background neutralization and then color calibration or you can use photometric calibration and the way this works is you can basically pull uh, the image parameters from the image itself so like if I were to pull pull this up here the luminance acquire from image and there it actually pulls it now you have to I think the default is a thousand so you have to adjust this to match the focal length of your scope uh, if you're using a small scope and you're you, trying to do uh, work on drizzle data you need to come up with the right figure to put in here right because if you drizzle 300 millimeter focal length it's not going to be 300 millimeter and it won't be able to plate solve uh, and then the pixel size it also pulls that off of the metadata that's on your image file and so you just apply that it does a, a, a plate solve and assigns color values and that's what I ended up with all right, so the next step is to uh, blend the HA with the RGB data, and I use pixel math to do this. Now, I've been using this method for a while, and uh, I actually have a video on my YouTube channel. I'll just pull it up here real quick. Um, in this video here, boosting your astrophotography with HA, I actually go through the specific steps uh, for doing this. So I'm not gonna repeat the whole process in this current video. I also have a link to the article, which is where I got this information from. It's a great article, and uh, the author of the article also has a YouTube channel himself, so I encourage you guys to check that out. Uh, but anyway, so this is the first step where you're basically modifying the HA file uh, to to separate the HA data from everything else, and what you end up with is uh, this here so I mean this looks really ugly and it does weird things to the stars but you can ignore that the, the main thing is these little blobs of HA that's that's what we're trying to get to ingest the uh, ingest that into our uh, color data now the article that I referenced doesn't include steps like running DBE and noise reduction but I ended up doing that anyway uh, because my first couple attempts at merging them it didn't didn't look very good uh, but anyway so this is what I ended up with and then the second step is this formula here so what you're doing is you're taking this and dropping it onto the RGB image and this is the information that you put in there this is the uh, variable that you use uh, and this is you have to play with this uh, because if uh, if if your value for B or boost is too high then it'll put too much HA and it'll mess with your backgrounds and everything uh, but anyway let's see I think I have some examples so yeah see how there's like some extra red and this artifact here that I had from the HA data is showing through it's just a little bit too much 
and I think I did this where I'm modifying that setting and I think this is where I ended up with and I remember yeah so this here is little bits of HA color mixed in with uh, the rest of the RGB now normally uh, you would also use the same method and apply it to the luminance channel. That way your HA is represented in the luminance. But because my uh, HA data was so poor, uh, I didn't feel that there would be any benefit to doing that. I just, just wanted the HA color, and that's all I was after. All right, so next up is to basically put uh, the luminance in with the HA RGB. Uh, so I moved over to a different workspace and here's our deconvoluted illuminance. Now I didn't think this artifact here was too much of a problem. I, I suspect it would just kind of disappear in the background because the background's obviously not going to be that uh, that dark uh, that light. But I did want to take care of these donuts. Now there's a few methods out there. Um, to deal with stuff like donuts and and by the way uh, it, it does this, you can use this method for um, halos as well uh, I just do a really quick and dirty uh, job using range masks it just takes a few minutes it's not perfect uh, but basically what I do is I create I created this range mask here right just standard range mask and then I took this into uh, this range mask into Photoshop uh, and you can do it in Pixinsight too but I just made this whole area black except for these rings so if you were to stay in uh, Pixinsight you just use a clone stamp tool uh, but it's just faster and easier to use a brush in Photoshop and so the range mask that I ended up with was this right and it's just a matter of applying the mask to the image and then using curves so I can demonstrate here really quick right so this area is darker so we just want to raise it up there we go there we go I mean <laughs> it's not perfect right and and I'm just I'm not using as much care right now because I'm, I'm just demonstrating this live but I mean this is how you can do it it's it's good enough I think that it, it'll disappear in the background So anyway, this is what I ended up with. And I mean, you can see, so you can barely see it there, and you can barely see it there, but uh, I don't think they're really that noticeable in the final image. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, step through. All right, so here's our, actually, no, that's not it. Here it is, okay. So what we're doing here is we're just blurring it out. No, oh, this is one. All right, so I blur it. Uh, you want to blur whenever you do uh, add luminance to your RGB data. You want to blur the uh, color because all you're getting is just the color out of it. And so this takes care of any kind of weird color noises that are in there. And there's a few different ways to do it. I just uh, use noise reduction, MMT, and you just disable these layers and drop it onto your color image, and you get a blurred image. So next we open up the LRGB combination tool and yeah, you can ignore that and you just drop your luminance in there and just drop it onto your blurred color and so that's what I did and that's what I ended up with and so from here it's mostly okay that's I forgot I did uh, I did go starless I don't always go starless especially on galaxies because it sometimes does 
weird things, but uh, Star Exterminator, which is what I used, has been uh, improving and it's gotten better at uh, leaving all the little galaxies in the background. And uh, let's see, more curves work, boosting saturation. So the reason why I got the preview box here is that I have a mask. We can see it here. Let's reveal it. And so this way I can do some work on the galaxy core without messing around back here. And it looks like this is where I ended up with. Next I did some work on the stars. And yeah, so that's what it started off as and pull back on curves, invert to remove green. Even though this is broadband, you still sometimes get some kind of weird magenta colors in there. So the old invert and <laughs> subtract green still works even on broadband. Using saturation. I actually ran uh, color calibration on this too. I mean, it's not something you think you can do, uh, but uh, I don't remember which step, but like literally I just went to color calibration and just dragged and dropped it on there because it wasn't liking how the stars were coming out. I was getting that weird hazy orange color and not enough blues. So anyway, ended up with this and then I combined them ended up with that. Now in this one I felt that the stars were a little bit too strong. Like they look too too bright compared to the galaxies. So I went back, I tweaked the stars, and then ended up with this. Which I thought looked better. Now I did a little bit more work. Uh, you can see I got a mask here. I did a blue mask because I wanted to do some work. Uh, I felt like it was a little bit too purpley. So I did some extra work. And let's see, is this it? No, that's not it. Well, so I ended up over here. Yeah, image 107, clone one. So this is uh, my first finished, and then I tweaked it some more. If you ever see a PS at the end of my uh, file name, it means I took it into Photoshop, and I tweaked the colors just a little bit. I mean, you don't see too much of a difference here. But anyway, that's the final image. So to recap, uh, a couple challenges that I ran in, in with this one, I had some soft data due to uh, marginal seeing conditions. I had dust molts that were not being corrected by the flats. Uh, I had a few other issues going on. Uh, one thing though, the data in the finished product is actually pretty clean. There's no uh, noise reduction or anything that I had to do afterwards. So this is pretty much it. So if anyone's got any questions or comments, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, if um, you like this kind of content, please give me a like. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And um, have a good day. Clear skies.